controversy in Turkey as religious body approves marriage to earthquake orphans. Yes, what? these what words the should not be in the same sentence, but this is what we're dealing with in 2023. Turkey's religious body, the Directorate of Religious Affairs, also known as uh, the Yanet, faced harsh criticism for issuing a fatwa that allowed adoptive parents to marry their adoptive children. The ruling was issued in response to a question about adopting children whose parents died in the massive earthquake that hit, hit Turkey and Syria. Quote, while Islam praised those who aid or take care of orphans, it does not recognize adoption as a legal status, the body's high council of religious affairs wrote. The three paragraph long edict explained that adoptive children could not inherit property from their adoptive parents. But the fatwa maintained that there was no obstruction to adoptive parents marrying their adopted children, even though marriage was not even mentioned in the original question. Various organizations and fit individuals criticized the ruling for violating Turkey's civil code and paving the way for, uh, let's just say, mistreatment of children. The, uh, the Diyanet retracted the fatwa in their second statement and emphasized the importance of respecting countries' laws. Wait, explain this to me. How is this helping? It's, it's not. It's not. Let's be how clear. do they think it's how do they think it's helping? So they were basically I don't know. I don't know. Because Islamically they are correct. Here's the thing. So it was just like people asking, like, hey, can I adopt some of these children that were orphaned in this horrific event that sent like what like a seventh to a fifth of our country under rubble? Like, could I could I help some of these kids? And they're basically like, yes, it is seen as a very noble thing to do in our faith. However, like they do not have certain legal rights, um, which is true. And also you can marry an adoptive child. You have a right to marry an adoptive child, which in Islam, this is actually true. I know, but why, why, why would this be a help? Okay, so in Islam, an adoptive child is not actually your child right yeah. because there is no such thing as accepting somebody that is adopted as actually a child right? actually your child and the story behind that is actually pretty insane for why that is but <laughs> so that means that you could marry them okay but mm -hmm. here's a question I, again I, I have to repeat my question how is this helping with the quake thing i mean armin i don't think because Okay, so let me. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand, or I'm trying to put my mind on Muslim cap on. Okay, maybe I'm just being stupid. I don't get. I'm trying to get their perspective. Maybe because if the understanding is, if the understanding is that oh, if you marry these orphans, then you're supporting them, right? Oh, I think I got it. Okay, so here's why it didn't make sense. Like. Like, okay, so these are orphans, you marry them, so now they have a home, okay? No, but if you had been adopting them, they already have a home. The, so you don't need to, when you adopted them, you're not going to give them a second home because now you're marrying them. You already adopted them. But go on. So I should be clear, the fat one is not it's saying, not it. it's not saying to go marry the orphans. It's saying just like, if you adopt the orphans, this is I know. still hello. Do you know what I know? I just know what just happened. This is grooming. So you're saying what this is what you're saying. That if you go adopt these children, you can eventually marry them. So you are we're basically giving you a bonus for why you should go adopt these children. So you see all these orphan girls, children, you're like, I don't want to be a parent. I'm like, okay, what about eventually a husband? So go pick them while they're young and grow them in your household. And once they're the right age, marry them. It's That's what's happening here. It's telling, it's giving you extra incentives to go adopt children. Because it's telling you that, remember, that you could eventually marry them. 
That's what's happening here. Isn't that like literal grooming? Isn't that what the very definition of grooming? Yeah, there's some pretty devious subtext going on here. And but is am I reading too much into this, or is that not what is being said here? Like, okay, we need these children to be taken care of. I'm like, okay, well, if you say you could marry your adoptive ch adopted children, well, how is that supporting them? Because when you adopt them, they've already been taken care of. So the only explanation that comes to my mind is that, well, because saying that you could marry them increases your incentives to go adopt them. That's what I, my understanding is. Am I reading too much into this? I don't interpret it that way, but I, I see very easily how you got there. Okay. It's, so it's, why it's, has been... it's completely <laughs> in bad taste. No matter what. <laughs> Secular Sakai, this comment. <laughs> Chris Hansen, why don't you have a seat? <laughs> 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 Turkish, no, no, yes, it's a Turkish Republic. Why don't you have a seat? Yes, <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. Um, um, it's it's so bad. And but what um, uh, D is pointing out is that this this fat what this news did not go over well at all. People were freaking outraged. They were railing against them, and then journalists that were calling out the religious body that. Put out this fatwa they actually started getting the police started making complaints against the journalists that were calling this out of course um and um it people were outraged they were so pissed off and and then in reaction to this severe backlash this ministry which receives billions of dollars of public funding said um Issuing a second statement, it accused people of ill will of distorting what was written. It said, quote, it is admirable that people want to foster adoptions of the quake, it said, Ekuane, um, another ministry. The second statement that said that while Islamic scholars agreed that adopted foster children were not considered kin in Islam, this reiterating its ruling and softer wording, it underlined the rules of the country should be respected. Because let's be clear, everything that's intimated in this fatwa is completely illegal under the actual civil law. Adoptive children have the same rights as naturally born children in the civil code, and they are certainly not, um, it's illegal to marry them 100%. So everything about this is just outrageous and um, illegal. That's a crime. Right. Um, okay, so, by the way, so, um, Soha is saying, but adoption is haram in Islam in the first place. Well, I mean, technically, no. I mean, it's adoption means that you consider them to be your child. So what is allowed is fostering a child, which is we laymen call that adoption. But if you want to be technical, you can foster a child, but you just can't consider them to be your children. So the, the haram part is calling them your actual children. But you could like take children in your house and you could foster them. And is what most people call an adoption. But if you want to be technical, there's a difference between adopting a child and fostering a child. Adoption means that they are now your children. Fostering is just like you're just taking care of. But we laymen just call them both adoption. So, yeah. So, yeah, the part that the, the t taking them in your house and taking care of them like a parent, that's not haram. The calling them your child part, that is the haram part. Yeah. And we got a super chat. No man is saying F Islam, F religion, F Hindutva. We got another super chat from Secular oh. Sakai, another $5. Oh, Thank well. you very much, Sakai. Can you read this, Armin? This, yes, Secular Sakai is saying Turkey also has a uh, conspiracy theory uncles saying the wait, uh, oh, conspiracy theory uncles saying the US used the HAARP research facility in Alaska to cause the earthquakes and destroy the AKP. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's a new one. 
There's I haven't heard one. that one before. That's a new one. I've heard. I have heard of conspiracy theories that you cause earthquakes, but uh, they are all insane. By the way, you can't cause earthquakes, but yeah, amazing. So I don't know what to do with that information, but yeah, that's insane. Um, oh, GJ is here He's saying hi. GJ here. I am siding with Armin Navabi here. Islamic doctrine forbids adoption. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for taking. Look, I didn't disagree with that. This is hilarious. No, just... you were. I don't know. You did not. You were wrong, and I was correct. I know you didn't say anything about this, but my side was the correct one. But go on. <laughs> How do you think you say this name, Aristot uh, Aristotle? Arist Aristotle's, excuse me, Aristotle. Aristotle's is saying he just discovered why <laughs> adoption is banned in Islam. Unbelievable. I just looked it up. The founder of the religion caused the divorce of his adopted son's marriage, denied his adoption of him, and then married his now formally adopted son's wife. Wow. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but let me I explain. Love explain someone it. discover this in real time. <laughs> I just, went, I just went Google this, and I, I, I wanted to see why Islam doesn't allow adoption, and this is insane. I was so not expecting reason, this kind of. I was worms. not expecting this. So, Muhammad, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, one day goes to his adopted son's house to see him. His adopted son's, his adopted son was called Zaid, right? And Zaid, which is the adopted son of Muhammad, his wife is named Zainab. And Muhammad goes to his son's house and he sees Zainab not covered very much. And she be sexy. She be, she had, she was tight. And Muhammad was like, oh my God, oh my God, I want her. Okay. And she, Muhammad was so horny. By the way, guys, this is not me making like insulting Islam. This is actual Islamic narrative. Okay. Muhammad was so horny for Zainab that he had to go home and pray. Like he was like, Oh my God. Oh my God. This is not good. This is not good. And Zainab could tell that Muhammad liked her. Like he was so obvious that Zainab, like when Zay guys, this is actual Islamic scripture. I am not making fun of Islam right now. This is actual Islamic hadith. It's true. When when Zaid came to back to his house, Zainab told her her husband and Muhammad's adopted son that your dad really wants me like badly, okay? And Zaid went to his father, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, and was like, "Dude, you could have her. Just I'll you, if you want Zainab, if you want my wife, I'll divorce her and you marry her." And Muhammad was like, no, 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 no. This is like a taboo thing. People will, people will judge me because in back then in that culture, marrying your son's wife was huge taboo. Because and then what happens? <laughs> okay. But then what happens? A Quranic verse comes down. Oh, oh, oh. A Quranic verse comes down and says very conveniently, so conveniently that Aisha points out that to Muhammad that your God keeps saying to you, this is Aisha's hadith. Aisha is on record telling Muhammad that your God seems to be like looking after your dick, doesn't he? Like your God seems to be like, you know, Allah seems to be revealing verses based on your wishes. Again, this is Aisha say calling out Muhammad on his verses. This is on record. Okay? So and a verse comes down from Allah saying that adopted children are not actually your children. This is just so that Muhammad could get his dick wet. So the reason why now adopted children are not the thing in Islam is because Muhammad was horny for his adopted son's wife. And what you, what Zaid was, his name was Zaid ibn Muhammad. So Zaid, the son of Muhammad, and they changed his name to like no longer the son of Muhammad. Okay. Because very conveniently, God himself spoke and said, this is totally fine, dude, go ahead. Yeah, and go and Muhammad is on record saying that he's, this is the most embarrassing verse in the Quran. But guess why? Not because it was revealed that he was horny for Zainab. 
because God told Muhammad, shamed the, uh, the Quranic verse shamed Muhammad. He's like, why are you worried more about what people say where I, Allah, have picked Zainab for you? So I have decided, I Allah is saying, I have married Zainab to you and you're worried, you are fearing people instead of fearing your Allah. So Muhammad is ashamed of this. Muhammad says that if there's one verse in the Quran that he could remove, it would be this verse. But not because he's embarrassed about being horny for Zainab. It's because Allah has revealed to everybody that Muhammad prioritized other people's talking about him over what Allah thinks of him. So by the way, the, 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 the twisting and manipulation of a very skilled malignant narcissist. Top it gets top. worse actually it gets oh. worse and do you want me to get into more detail this is very it gets very nuanced there it gets very nuanced here do you want is me to tell you why this is what happens when he's with the leather no, no. It, it's not sexual anymore oh what is it this whole thing this whole verse this whole adoption stuff it's about crushing rebellions and maintaining an empire. Oh. Yeah, it, people don't know this. This verse about Zayd and Zainab and adopted children and Muhammad being horny for Zainab, people don't understand, but this is actually about maintaining an empire. Do you, do you know how? Do people want to know how? Is this getting too off topic? So that adoptive sons can't make claims. No, no, no. Huh. It's because Islam comes from Judaism. And prophethood is inherited from, in Judaism, is, is inherited from sons, from fathers to sons. So you have to understand, early Islamic history... Islam is not fully formed yet. Islam at that point is not, as Muslims claim, very much similar to what we recognize as Islam is today. Okay? So, Islam is more of a Christian Jewish sect that later during that Abbasid period turns into what we recognize as Islam today. So, this Jewish sect has the tradition of prophethood being inherited when eventually the Abbasids are building and oh. canonizing Islam what is the greatest threat to their empire new prophets breaking the seal of the prophet there was no seal of the prophet they introduced the seal of the prophet Oh my this God. is why this is why the very verse in the Quran that says that your adopted children are not actually your children the next line is Muhammad is the seal of the prophets so what does Zaid not being the son of Muhammad have anything to do with Muhammad being the final prophet because it wants to make clear that Muhammad has no sons and it ends with Muhammad because the whole inheritance thing of going from one prophet to another ends with Muhammad because Muhammad has no sons and they make sure in the stories of Zaid they kill him in a battle before Muhammad dies so the narrative goes and Muhammad had no sons because he need to because there had to be no competition with the now canonized religion so there's no more prophets well he did but guess what to but guess what there was a rebellion there was a sect against the empire how did they do this how did they start a sect that branched out out of the sunni or back then canonized orthodox islam when they had no prophets you ended the line of prophethood. So if you end the line of prophethood, if you want to create a rebellion with its own religious brand against an empire with its own orthodox Islamic religion, and you have no more prophethood, you create something new and you call it the Imamite. And if you cannot go through Muhammad's son, you go through Muhammad's daughter. 
which is Fatima and married to Ali and you create the Ahlul Bay concept and now you have Shia Islam and Shia Islam will become the brand of your rebellion. This is why Fatima becomes such a significant thing in the rebellion. Well, against this. Yeah. And this is all comes from the story of Zayd and Zainab has a political purpose. Anyways. I love that deep dive. That was good. Yes. Very good. Yes. Yes. Do you guys appreciate what I just said in the last year? This is like, if your mind has not been blown by what I just said, you did not understand what I just said. That was profound. Yeah. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary, Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.